have Miss Carolina Bufford tonight. Hey, um, we were blessed. We got to see, got to hear from her husband a couple weeks earlier, and now we get the wife version. So, yeah, Carolina's awesome. If you don't know her, get to know her. Um, you're going to get to know her here in a little bit. She's going to share some of her heart, and you're going to be so blessed and fall in love with her. So, <laughs> Carolina. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start with prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, you are so good, God. You are so, so good, and you're so beautiful, Lord. Father, I thank you so much for, for your presence, Lord. Your presence is so heavy tonight, God. I feel it so strongly, Lord. It's so beautiful to just see uh, your bride worshiping you, Lord. I know it pleases you, Lord, so I feel the fragrance of your, ple your pleasant fragrance upon us today, Lord, because you're so pleased with just your worshiping bride, God. So, so thank you, and Father... Um, May only your words come forth tonight, Lord. May nothing of me come out, Lord, but may it only be you. So I just give you permission, Lord, to just take over, Father, if it's completely different than what we've talked about earlier. <laughs> let it be so, God. Uh, your will be done. I don't want to put any restriction on you, Holy Spirit. So just come and lead. Come and, come and talk tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Okay, so first I want to start with a disclaimer. Um, <laughs> the last time I spoke to people, um, like in a large crowd, besides kids, uh, was when I was in the island of Pom uh, not Pompeii, in Saipan, and half the people didn't understand me, so I was okay, you know, I couldn't, they're like, I was, I was free to do whatever, because most of them didn't know what I was saying, so, <laughs> but, um, so that was the last time, and that was like in 2012, so, uh, bear with me if I'm a little rusty, um, but the Lord has given me a really good, a really good message, well, that has convicted me and has really started to transform me, um, well, as I was getting ready for tonight, too, um, my husband was like, bring your flag in case you get nervous. So if I start flagging, you know why. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start. Um, okay, another thing. <laughs> um, saying something that I'm not living, like teaching something that I'm not living, freaks me out to no end. Like, so... So this may be something that you all know, um, but it's something that, that I know the Lord has worked through me uh, and is working in me and knitting in my heart. So um, I am terrified to preach theology or something that I'm not certain of because like, I, I don't want that on me, you know, that pressure from the Lord. But if you will turn with me to Revelation 2, 1 through 5. This is a verse that has been spoken about a few times here, but it's still messing me up. So here we go again. Um, Revelation 2. I'll start at the top. It says, To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, The word of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The part that gets me um, is, but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen, from where you have fallen, repent, and do the works you did at first. Um, a, couple, a couple weeks ago, I think, Chris um, was talking about refreshing and refreshing our relationship with the Lord. And um, she talked about... Um, how even married couples have to 
keep it fresh, you know? And, um, and with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord, we have to keep it fresh too. Um, and we have to like, you know, when I was, when I first fell in love with the Lord, it was so good. It was so like a little kid, like a little kid crush, you know, like just so in love everywhere I saw him and in everything I saw the Lord and in every sunrise and every sunset, it was God painting it just for me. You know, it was like that. It was, it's fresh, but then like as you continue to grow and you walk, you kind of, some things for me at least started to kind of not be as fresh, not be as romantic as they were before. Um, and so this is where that was getting me, what, what Chris was saying, I was so convicted by it because I'm like, it's true. Like me and, me and God used to go on dates. I would call it my jam sessions, Jesus and me time. And we would like seriously go on dates, like, um, beautiful places like he would lead me to the most most beautiful places and um the to, to, to go back um i fell in love with the lord in hawaii so um so it was already beautiful but just like my love for him made everything even even more beautiful you know when you fall in love everything the person does is so romantic it's so beautiful your eyes don't see anything that's negative everything is like rainbows and butterflies and that's how it was for me and the lord it was but really like rainbows like every day i would see rainbows and butterflies and you know i really did see those things but that's that was my relationship with the lord it was so romantic and um he romanced me on the north shore of oahu on the beach and it was just it was so good um but as I grew in my relationship with him, it started to, things weren't as romantic as before. I started to not see it like I, I saw it at first. And that was scary. <laughs> and I'll touch more on that. Um, but I also want to share um, something that the Lord showed me a while ago. And it was, I asked him and I said, God, before, you know, while I was in my mother's womb, what was your name for me? What did you call me? And he said joy, that he called me joy. And joy is something huge, because in my relationship with the Lord, when it first started off, it was just joy. I was in a state of complete joy with the Lord. Everything he did, I was in joy of. And it didn't mean that my situation was always something to be joyful about, because there were times, like I said, I was living in Hawaii. I was a part-time teacher making no money, paying ridiculous amount for rent. Um, but in everything, I was so full of joy. Like there were days where all I would have would be goldfish crackers that I would feed my kids for snack. And I wasn't hangry or anything. I was like so joyful through it all because I was so in love with him. And so joy was that, was that thing that I knew, like my love for the Lord just reflects in joy because everything that I do is joy. The way that I treat people is in joy. And you can ask my husband or you can ask anybody, like that joy did drift. And I would tell people, I'm not the same that I used to be. I'm not as fun as I used to be. I'm not full of joy like I used to be. And they would be like, no, you are. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, like I remember, like when I first fell in love and it was full of joy and everything. And, and that started to dwindle, but, but the Lord has brought it back. So, I am joyful again. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, so, one of, the, one of the things that this verse um, kind of has me think about is, what are the warning signs to my first love dwindling? You know, what are the things that, um, that sound the alarm? What's going, like something's, something's off, you know? And for me, like I said, because of joy, it started to be when, when things weren't going in joy when I wasn't walking in joy anymore. That's when I noticed there's something wrong here because outwardly I was doing the same things, maybe even more than I was at first. I was, you know, like whatever I did, I was doing a lot of work, but, um, but the joy was gone in a lot of things. Um, and one of those things was when I was, you know, fresh in my relationship with the Lord, I started craving the word like, like nothing. I craved it so deeply. Um, like I said, I didn't eat much because I didn't have money to buy food, but the word was my food. Um, cause I would come home from work and I had like a two hour commute on the bus, you know? Um, and I would come home from work and just like run to my back lanai, you know, and just to be in the word, to submerge myself in the word, in his word. And it was so sweet. And there were days when I, I would go out there to my back lanai and, um, there would just be a rainbow 
the whole time that I'm out there. And then I would come inside in the rainbow and I would go back to see if the rainbow was still there and it'd be gone. So it was like, it was just there for that time. And it was, it was, he did so many things like that. It was so good. But then um, when I started to notice like the warning signs, you know, I noticed that I was still in my word, maybe even more than before, but there wasn't that joy there. Um, it, had, it had been gone. Um, and that, that was hard, because I'm like, I'm still doing it. I'm going through the motions. Why am I not feeling the same way I was before? Um, but yeah, that was a warning sign to me. Like, yeah, there's something that's wrong. Um, and um, yeah. <laughs> So with that, um, another thing that the Lord is showing me is um, that when we surrender to his spirit, um, the, the fruit of our labor is the fruit of his spirit. And joy is a fruit of his spirit. And um, so, when, so in my life, I, I guess I wasn't I wasn't really fully surrendering to the Lord in a lot of things. You know, I was, when, when I started to notice my, my dwindling of the, the freshness of his love, it was, um, you know, I was a little bitter that I was not in Hawaii anymore. I'm like, maybe it was Hawaii that made me feel so romantic, you know? And so, and, but then we went back and it was still not there. So it wasn't the place, but it was my state of being with the Lord. But when we surrender to his Holy Spirit, like, in everything that we do, we see the fruit of his spirit. Um, so that's a warning sign, you know, that, okay, we are not in our first love if I'm not showing the fruit of the spirit. So why don't we turn to Galatians 5.22, which everybody knows, but let's do it anyway. Um, But first, before we go to 522, I want to go to 519. And it says, now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sor sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like this. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. I love that part. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. And when we keep in step with the Spirit, those are the fruits that we will bear. That's the fruit that we will bear. Um, not plural, singular. You know, that's the fruit out of everything that we do. That's what, that's what will come out. Um, as I was researching this and going a little deep study, a little blue letter Bible study on um, Revelation 2.4, um, I found a really awesome commentary, and he, um, the guy was talking about um, the church in Ephesus and how they were doing, they were doing good stuff. They were doing really good stuff. Um, probably, you know, awesome stuff. So if, I mean, even if we read um, the Revelation uh, 2.4 in there, we see that it says that they're enduring patiently, bearing up for, um, for his name's sake, and not growing weary. You know, they're doing all these awesome things. But what that church in Ephesus didn't have was their first love. They no longer had their first love. And they had um, the right motives, but they lacked the right emotion. So they weren't working out of that, that state of love. Um, and the Lord is more interested in the motivation than the action. Um, um, and we have to be careful us that motivations are not people oriented, but that they're God oriented. And God always uh, wants us to move out of love in everything that we do. Um, and so if we can't serve him out of love, then we shouldn't be serving him. If we can't um, feed the hungry out of his love, then, then we shouldn't do it. Um, and, you know, in 1 Corinthians, where it's talking about, um, like, if I do all these things but have not love, then really I have nothing. I'm, not, I'm doing this just, just for kicks. I'm not really doing any, anything out of love. So it's important for us to, like, 
um, check it. <laughs> check it with the spirit, Lord. Like, check my heart. Am I really walking in your love? Is this really out of your love or out of my obligation or out of what I feel like I need to be doing because I'm a Christian? Um, because what you need to be doing if you're a Christian is love, right? That's all he says. They'll know you by your love. And um, um, one of the things he said, um, I think it was Paul who wrote, yes, Paul who wrote in Corinthians was um, that the love of God compels them. So everything that they did was compelled by the love of God. So um, that's one of the things that the Lord is checking me is like, are you compelled by my love when you do these things? Um, and so making sure that, 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 I, that I have him search my heart and see any wicked way, any unloving way in me and remove it from me, cast it away from me because I only want to do what pleases his heart. And the only thing that pleases his heart is when we move out of love. Um, for me, um, my love, like I said, was in joy. And um, like I was, I was displaying that I was walking in his love by the way that joy was uh, reflected in my life. Um, and uh, as I was studying the word joy a little deeper, I came across, and I don't know anything about Rick Warren. I know a lot of people have read his books and stuff. I don't know anything, but he had this amazing quote um, that he said, joy is a settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right, and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. And that was my state of being when I was in Hawaii. In every situation, I was praising him. And, and, and we even see that with the, with the early church. They were being stoned, but they got up in joy and went and preached the gospel again. So um, it doesn't matter. Like Joy doesn't mean that you're always, that you're always feeling good. You know, Joy just means that you always trust God wow. and that you know that God is going to, come through in every situation and, and everything. So, um, and also like the difference between joy and happy, like I'm sure they weren't happy they were getting stoned, but they were filled with joy because that's a fruit of his spirit. Um, and so yeah, let love motivate us. Um, what I get from um, the Revelation 2, 4, 2 is, is three things, is to remember, repent, and do. So we remember what we did at first, we repent for not doing it anymore, and then we do it, but we do it with the right motivation. Um, and in, in the church in Ephesus, um, like I said before, they weren't lacking in, in works. Um, they were doing great things, but, but their, uh, their heart was not, was not in love. They didn't have love, so it didn't matter that they were doing the right things. God still said that he was gonna remove his lamp from there. And that's scary for us, you know, like we could be doing so much and then what if, like if love is not there, it doesn't matter. Um, we're wasting our time. So like, let's do little and do it in love than a lot and not with love. So Keith also said something really cool on Sunday um, that was messing me up. He said, keep fresh by surrender. Die to yourself. You can't follow the fullness of God in your flesh. Flesh gotta go. And that is in quotations. <laughs> and that was so good. That was so good because that is so true. Even like when we're going to do everything and operate out of love is then keep our, our first love fresh. We have to surrender. We have to die to self because our self, we can't we can't uh, do anything out of love out of our flesh. Our flesh doesn't do anything out of love. It's opposite of that. Um, so we have to kill the flesh, put it, it gotta go, like he said. And um, we just have to be in the fullness of God. Um, so a question that I, that I ask myself is what works, like what do I, what do my works bear? Like what fruit does my work bear? Um, and that's a good question to ask if we're doing an evaluation of ourselves, like what's going on? Am I doing things out of love? Like what is the fruit of my labor? You know, like in what areas am I bearing love? It, like am I bearing the fruit of his spirit by, by acting in love? Um, okay, so uh, like I said, my joy has been returned, um, and the Lord did that in a lot of in a series of ways. Um, but while being at Bethel, there was so much that uh, He did just to make sure that I knew that it was back. <laughs> and um, and one of those things was um, I was in um, 
we went to the encounter rooms, which is while they're having the healing rooms, they have this open space, kind of, kind of like what we did here. And it was so beautiful. But I, when you walk in, there's like a little stand and you can pick like prophetic pa uh, paintings, that picture, pictures that people have drawn and have um, things in the back. And, and the night before, there had been this beautiful ballerina picture. And I was like, and she was giving it away. You know, they had painted it during worship and she was giving it away. I was like, I want it. It's for me. You know, she said, who wants this picture? And me and Mona were like, we do, you know. Um, but um, we didn't get it. Um, <laughs> but then I go in and I see a beautiful ballerina. And I'm like, oh, she's so pretty. Um, and so I pick it up. And then in the back of it, it says, the title is Pure Joy. And, um, and it says, you turned my mourning into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Um, and then it says, this dancer symbolizes the return of joy and freedom. Your season of joy is here. Take hold of it. She represents being vulnerable and expressing oneself in order to be known. The weight has been lifted from your shoulders. You are expressing the beauty of that God has placed within you. And so, you know, God is so good. <laughs> um, you can't really argue with that. My joy is back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> um, and then there was a, I mean, the word joy, you can ask the team that went down there. It was constantly just, he just constantly kept saying, it's, it's here. It's who you are. That's the identity that I placed in you. And it's, it's back, and, and when I got back, I was a little afraid that it would go away, <laughs> you know? I'm like protective over it, keeping it tight, like a, like a teddy bear, like I don't want it to go away. And he's like, it can't go away once you're, like if you're surrendered to me, it won't go away, that's who I am. Uh, that's my identity. Um, so, so yeah. Um, but while we were at Bethel, like um, it just reminded me, you know, this verse, like, you know, return to your first love. And I feel like for all of us that were there, we kind of went back to that first love. We were like googly eyed, just like going nuts out of all the things that God was doing, like unbelievable things, like just the way that he was speaking to us individually. And, and so I asked the, the team that went to Bethel to just like release it here, to release that. Um, so I don't want to talk for too long. I want us to just really release what we, what we got and for you to receive that. Um, but also I want to... Um, I'm a teacher, so I want to give you a homework. <laughs> if you, like me, feel convicted by this verse, um, uh, like I invite you to ask God to search your heart and see, um, to search your heart first to remind you of your first love when you were first in love with the Lord um, and what that looked like and what you were how, head over heels for, you know, um, and how that reflected in the way that you walked and in the fruit that you bear. Um, and the, whatever is not is not there anymore. He wants to give it back. He's he he's he has it there for us. He's not a he hasn't changed. His love for us hasn't changed. If anything, as we grow older, like I don't drink wine and I've never had old wine, but I hear that old wine is better because it's it gets better with time. And I think with the time that we spent with the Lord, I think it'll only just get better and better. It won't grow dry. You can't grow dry when you're like with living water because that just doesn't grow dry. Um, so, um, so I encourage you to do that um, too. And, um, and there's a lot of things that I have written down, but I, yeah, I think that's, that's all I'm supposed to say tonight. Um, but I will have the team come up and just share that dance, just dance over us. And if you want prayer or anything too, just to, to release that here. So yeah. <laughs>